Fresh inflation numbers came in, and once again, they were hot. Yesterday, the BLS came out with their April producer price index data. This measures the prices received by domestic producers for their output. So it's basically inflation for business. And the numbers came in hot. In fact, they beat every major Wall Street prediction, reporting a 6.2% annualized pace of price hikes. Core PPI, which excludes food and energy, actually more than doubled Wall Street's estimate at that same 62 That brings the past four months of PPI to an average of 4.1%. Now compare that to the previous four months, so the middle of last year, when it was declining by a half percent per month. In fact, this was the fastest annual PPI increase since April of 2023, back when Biden inflation was supposedly on its last legs. In terms of what's driving it, of course, it's the money printing. So print $6 trillion and poof prices go up. Still, in individual terms, energy registered a big jump, but the big one was prices for government purchases, which leapt 20% annualized on the month. In other words, government buying is hogging up enough resources to drive up prices for everybody else. Zooming out, this marks the sixth month now of accelerating inflation, so, so much for transitory. And that is true whether you're reading the standard CPI measure, of inflation or the Fed's preferred PCA measure or now producer prices. Meanwhile, the economy is slowing with GDP growth dropping by a third to barely above population growth. It could actually be below population growth depending how many random millions we have just imported. The accelerating inflation and falling production has led to widespread predictions of stagflation, which Jerome Powell addressed two weeks ago saying he doesn't see the stag and he doesn't see the inflation. Keep in mind that is after the GDP numbers and after six months of rising prices. So in Washington, you only see what you are paid to see. As for markets, in a recent video, I mentioned that bad news is good news in a central bank-dominated economy. Wall Street gets paid when there's blood in the streets. And so they took these rising prices in stride, partying like the Fed will cover their gambling losses. In fact, this rigged gambling house, the Fed put in Wall Street lingo, has driven the stock market to 197% of GDP. That's about $55 trillion. That compares to 40% in 1950s, and it blows away the 150% peak of the dot-com mania. That ratio, called the Buffett indicator after famed investor Warren Buffett, is a golden bubble indicator. Of course, if the Fed bails you out, that bubble can keep going, raining wealth upon the rich while the poor is cobbled together, spare change for a Happy Meal. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. PPI tends to predict CPI, so regular inflation. On the other hand, PPI is also very volatile, and under Biden, it is regularly revised to oblivion. So there will be a lot more attention paid to tomorrow's CPI number, complete with armchair estimates of just how much housing manipulated the read. Our economy's Achilles heel is Washington's obscene spending, which is driving inflation and apparently strangling the productive economy. Given that's not changing anytime soon, it's a clown car of blind Jerome Powell's, lying Janet Yellen's, and confused Joe Biden's, all working as one to gaslight the American people so they don't see our economy tipping into a stagflation that could last for years. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.